What happens to a micro bit if it is allowed to fall freely? Will it feel weightless? How can a smartphone display the image upright even if you rotate it? How does an airbag know when to inflate? Both a smartphone, an airbag and a microbit contain an accelerometer. We will have a closer look at this item. The microbit to the right sends both X, Y and Z values from the accelerometer to the other microbits. You can see that the readings change value when I change the position of the microbit to the right. Here you can see how the X, Y and Z axis are located on the microbit. The Z axis runs vertically through the microbit. And here you can see what values will theoretically be obtained when the microbit is held in different positions. We start with a program that looks like this. Together with the other programs in this video, it can be downloaded by using the links in the comments below. If you have watched my YouTube video, Microbit Measurements, you may find it easier to understand the program. At the top you will see an array of three entries where the X, Y and Z acceleration will be read and converted into texts. By changing the variable press you can decide which of the entries will be displayed. When an entry is selected, the length is calculated and the characters are displayed one at a time and passed on to microbit number 2. If running non-stop, the X, Y, Z values are constantly displayed one after another. By pressing button A, B or both A and B, we can select what type of reading to display or select to run non-stop. Microbit number 2 contains this program. It receives the character from the microbit that makes the readings and passes it on to microbit number 3. The program for microbit number 3 is the same, but the numbers here must be changed. And the same must be done with the other microbits. Here you can see the program running non-stop and that the X, Y, Z values are constantly coming after each other. By pressing button A you can see that only the X values are displayed. When the microbit stands horizontally on one side, I get approximately minus 1008. With the other side down, I get plus 1008, 24 or 40. Theoretically, I should get plus minus 1023. When I press button B again, I only get Y values. They also vary from minus approximately 1023 to plus 1023. When I press button B again, I can see that the Z values also vary in the same interval. When I press both A and B, the readings run non-stop. Now I type various associated X, Y, Z values into a spreadsheet. In the spreadsheet, I have created a column called MG. In each cell, there is a formula as shown in the picture. It adds the square of the X, Y, Z values and takes the square root of the total. Each time the result is above 1000 mg, no matter how the microbit is turned, but only if it is kept completely still. 
As you can see in the program, the microbit measures the acceleration in milli-g. 1000 milli-g is equal to 1 g, which again equals the acceleration of gravity on Earth. Thus, if a microbit measures an acceleration of 3000 milli-g, it corresponds to three times the impact you will get from the Earth's gravity. Now we will create a program that can perform the calculation from the spreadsheet and that can store a lot of data that later can be sent into a computer. The readings are stored in an array called list. For a start it is empty, the entries are added gradually. Each set of readings is calculated according to the formula and stored in the array. It all runs 50 times with a 50 millisecond pause after we hit button A. When we press button B, the entries in the array are read and sent out through the USB cable to a computer. Now we put the battery holder and the microbit together with a rubber band and make the test. I press button A and throw the microbit up into the air so that it makes a free fall. In order to load the data to a computer you need a terminal program. For Windows you can download TerraTerm or Termite for free. In Termite you have to make this setup. In my computer the USB port is called COM4. The speed must be 115,200 to fit a microbit. Now I press button B and the data is transferred. I mark the numbers and copy them. With TerraTerm it looks like this. I do the setup and press button B. Now I choose Edit, select all and copy the numbers. Then I put the numbers into column A in a spreadsheet and ask to have a graph drawn. I will try to explain why it looks the way it does. The first part shows the acceleration as I threw the microbit up towards the ceiling. The acceleration is greater than 2.5 g. The lower part of the graph shows the measurements while the microbit is in free fall towards the floor. Here the microbit measures the acceleration to be almost zero, which corresponds to a weightless state. But from the outside, the microbit has an acceleration. The last part of the graph shows what happened when I grabbed the microbit. To explain why the microbit measures the acceleration as it does, we can imagine that the accelerometer is a letter balance on which the microbit lies. When lying still, the balance will show the pull that the Earth's gravity makes on the microbit. Now we take the balance and the microbit up in an elevator. Here the balance still works. But if the elevator cable breaks, both balance, microbit and elevator will fall freely. They are all weightless. Until the elevator reaches the ground, the balance will show zero, and as seen from the elevator, there will be no acceleration of gravity. When people in a space station experience weightlessness, it is not, as many people believe, because that the space station has come out of the Earth's gravity. The explanation is that the space station is in free fall around the Earth. It speeds forward neutralizes the Earth's drag in the space station, so instead of falling down it constantly falls around the Earth. The same goes for the astronauts who are on board.